This is a brief introduction to the Inventory Pro work order module. And the work order module allows you to assemble kits or assemblies. Uh, and this, for this example, I'm going to assemble a bicycle. So on the item master list screen, I check this item off as a make. And under the components, I set that this item has two tires, one bicycle frame, a drive train, and two brakes, assuming a front brake and a back brake. I also added labor hours at two different costs for the labor hours. Uh, I'm going to show you that the drivetrain and brakes are both sub-assemblies. So I'm going to open up the drivetrain item and I look at components for that. And the drivetrain for the bike is, is assembled from a chain, two gears, and two pedals. If I look at my brakes, they have one brake cable and two pads for the assembly. Now I'm going to create a work order. I'm going to create a new work order. Uh, the first tab and also the second tab of the work order is information pertaining to this work order. I'm going to change my status to open. On the parts tab I'm going to select my bicycle and I'll say I'm going to create one bicycle. And first I'm going to show you, I'm going to click add only the top level components. And this added only of the upper level components. So the drivetrain and the brakes show as a completed sub-assembly on the work order, meaning that another work order was already done to create those sub-assemblies or they have been received separately. If I change this to show all components, the line items underneath this change. Now I don't need any drivetrains because they're taken care of by having two gears, uh, two pedals, and a chain within this work order. The work order also does the math for you. If I'm going to assemble 100 bicycles, so in this case, instead of one bicycle frame, now I need 100 bicycle frames. And that math comes down here. You know, I need 200 tires for 100 bicycles. If I don't have enough stock for this work order, I can create purchase order I'm going to uncheck the stock button and now the, the PO committed column is checked off. And I can click my new PO button and it's going to create a new purchase order. It opens the PO utility screen. I'm going to click apply. Purchase order 49 was created. If I take a quick look at that PO, you can see it ordered 100 frames. And when it comes in, it has a reference of in this case work order number 22 and it's received in and reserved for that work order. I'm going to check this back off as stock. That way I went on for this demonstration I can just issue it out. Uh, you can commit items to work orders. If I click the commit button I'm now going to do a hard commitment to a work order. I'll say I'm using this frame. I can click commit. Now I have a hard commitment for work order 22, and I can't issue this out against other orders. It's been reserved for this work order. The other items have a soft commitment, meaning I need 200 pedals, but I could still, even if, if I have these in stock, these 98 in stock, I can issue those out for other orders because it's not a hard commitment yet to this work order 22. I can view my reserved. And if I want to uncommit something or commit more, items. You know, if I'm going to commit more brake cables, I can just click commit. To uncommit them, I just click the commit button next to the committed item and it's gone. It doesn't no longer has a hard commitment for that work order. Let's say I'm ready to receive a bicycle in. I'm ready to build a bicycle. I'm going to create I'm going to create one bicycle. I'm going to click the issue button. How many do I want to make? I'll just say one. Again, it does the math for me. It just puts the items for one bicycle. I'm going to click the load all button and the system was able to load this order for me. I'm going to click issue and now you can see this has been partially issued out. I'm going to close the work order screen. I'm going to open up my locate and move screen for the bicycle. If I look at my detail for one of these bicycles, you can see this one was received on work order 22, certain date and time, 
if I look at my bill of materials items issued, you can see specifically what was issued out for this item. And if this had a serial numbers, it would show the serial numbers in here. You can also print out different kinds of paperwork from that work order screen. If you print the indented work order, the indented bill of uh, indented bill bill of materials, you can see it shows it based on sub assemblies, and you could have as many iterations of this. You know, if if the gears had a sub assembly, that would it would show under here. So you can see the drivetrain has these three items as the sub assembly, and it has the units uh, still required for this work order. And that's briefly how the work order module in Inventory Pro works. If you'd like a more detailed explanation or a more detailed demonstration of Inventory Pro for Windows, please contact CISS at 610-266-7200 or our website, www.cissltd.com, or you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at cissltd.com. Thank you.